Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca and this is the Bauer Supreme Mock Glove. It's, it's basically a review. It's kind of a snapshot review because this isn't mine. It's not really good long term, so I can't talk about durability and stuff like that. But I got to use this with the puck machine. I got to use this on the ice. This is a demo set from a local retailer. So huge thanks to them. So this is a review of this glove and we did the 100 puck challenge on it. So we really kind of put it through its paces in that sense. Now, before I did videos comparing the uh, Supreme line to the Vapor line. I don't have the Vapor line with me anymore. I only have this ultrasonic. So I can't do a comparison of this to the Hyperlite, unfortunately. So you're gonna have to just check out the Hyperlite videos and compare them to kind of this and then compare these two together in this review to see like what differences and what you prefer for that. And like I mentioned, this was a demo set. So I have the pad review, the blocker review, and all this happened because of a local retailer called Front Row Sports. So they are in Canada and the US. The links are in the description. So if this video was helpful and you need any hockey equipment, check out those links in the description if you wanna buy some gear. It shows that this content was useful. Let them know that you came from Hockey Reviews. It would be greatly appreciated and it shows support for them to make this happen. If you wanna see me review other gear like say the True 20.2 or the CCM Access 2, reach out to those companies on social media. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Just say, hey, I wanna see Hockey Reviews demo your gear. Now, if you want to support the channel, you can also check out the links in the description to buy me a coffee and Patreon. Everything through there always comes back into this channel so I can keep making content and doing more reviews. All right, so this glove is, kind of seems like it's similar to this, but it feels like a massive, massive departure from what this is. And you might not look at it initially, but you got to put this thing on and really see the difference. It's pretty substantial, I would say, and it's pretty impressive to see what they did. So we're just gonna go over, I'm gonna try to hit like every part one by one, and then we'll do protection later on, and we'll do catching ability later on. So right now, we'll just kind of go over like these two and how they differ for the most part. The one thing on here that I can't totally talk that much about is this new skin. It's their new Cortex something. I can't, I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's in the marketing. I don't have the details of it. According to Bauer, it's something to do with like retention and consistency and supposedly better rebounds. But I mean, it's a glove. You don't want better rebounds on the glove, but it's not on the whole section. It's just basically on this part and on their pro custom, the whole section was their just normal digiprint Cortex stuff. But on the Hyperlite and stuff like that, you could see sections that were like more of a, this normal Gen Pro almost like material and not the Cortex. So that kind of continues here where they really limit what this material is actually used for. For the really unimportant part of this glove and aesthetics, I like this glove. Say I like the Mox line of graphics overall pretty good. The glove doesn't match perfectly and I'll show kind of what I mean through the customizer, but it's pretty decent. Everything down here is kind of like not really colorable, which kind of sucks. But I mean, the graphic itself looks pretty cool and I love those small little details in there. I wonder if that is actually something like an address or something like that. I don't know. I didn't look into it because it really doesn't matter that much. I'm sure someone who knows Bauer marketing will know what that is. Just looking at like this part of the glove, a big difference or at least a difference that I notice is the thumb. So this thumb is a little flatter right here. Well, I thought this glove did an excellent job of directing pucks into the pocket through the thumb. You can see a slightly flatter right there than what this is. This one just seems like it's a little bit more sloped into that pocket and it says small changer. I'm totally game with that though. The more you can get into that pocket, the better. The pocket itself looks like it's slightly bigger. I'm not sure if it is, but to me it always looks and when it's on your hand, it always feels slightly bigger. When you look right here at these bindings, there is less of a gap right here than there is right here, as you can see. So I'm not sure if that actually means that the, that pocket is a little bit bigger and if it just looks or deceiving. I didn't take a measurement out or anything. The other big, thing about this and what I really, really notice is kind of this whole part right here. Now, I said this part's more angled to the pocket on this glove compared to here. I feel like it's almost not the same right here. This part doesn't feel like it's scooped as much. So you'd have more of like a finger edge. So you can definitely see how it bumps out here than what is here. You, this one was flatter and while it does bump a little bit, you can see like where that is defined. It definitely doesn't feel like it's a bump out like that. This is closer to what the i feel the hyper light was and the vapor glove so that's kind of moving seems like it's moving in that direction a little bit now that might be a good thing for when you're closing to help with like puck retention if a puck's like coming out here and that's a little bumped might hold it in a little bit better or it just could be a reinforcement for the fingertip so it doesn't bend because after use the stuff kind of bends right and that could just be some more reinforcement there because it does feel a bit thicker in that regards so this is an older glove so it's a I feel like it's a little bit deceiving of a test. The other thing I found was right here feels flatter into the palm 
than what here does. So when I use this glove a lot, I notice like all this kind of feels like it directs in the pocket. This part felt less so. So I'm not sure if that is like they actually change the shape or anything, or if it's just kind of what's underneath and how your hand sits in it that I notice a bit of a difference there, but that is something I notice and notice pretty quickly. The T and everything looks very similar from here, but when we flip this over, we're gonna see something different. So we're talking about the backside and the kind of everything here really quickly. You can see a slight difference in the cuff, a little bit thicker right here than what is there, but I don't think it's a huge difference. And I'm not sure if this is just like maybe a manufacturing tolerance or what, but this does seem like it's slightly thicker all around and when we look on here it actually does show that off a little bit more too so just slightly thicker and a little bit more rounded it looks like at the end here but again this could just be like some deceiving parts or some tolerances i'm not totally positive what's if that's the case but i want to call it out now when we look at the backhand this part is where it kind of changed a bit this design is a lot less as you can see big compared to this one this one is still attached so we'll take that off and you can definitely see like the difference in this connection point right here. This is a lot smaller and it cover, kind of covers less. The interesting thing is these flaps are kind of the same, but when I noticed this flap, it always kind of hung out more where this one hangs inside. So th this cuff is a bit weird because when it comes, it comes like it's like inside of it. And when it's like that, it kind of can get in the way a bit of things, but it really should be on the outside and it just sits up there. And I noticed like I did that when I was playing and it works really well and doesn't get in the way at all when it is like that, but I don't know why it kind of sits in here. Kind of should be like that. I think the only thing is if they move this strap to be out here on the outside a bit more, it would maybe work a little bit better, but it's, it's a nitpick, but when you pop it on the outside, it's pretty good. It doesn't really get in the way. This one was kind of laced in right here. Well, this one is just a piece on, like connected onto the cuff itself. So a different, a bit different there, because you can see, you can kind of lift this one off where this one, you can lift this part all off and it completely comes there and this part just attaches here so different design there where this is kind of attached with a hinge for here and this is all loose so very different internal structure and strapping and we'll show that off in a second but we continue on to the back end where this part is kind of the same shape but much shorter here and i'm like it feels pretty solid to be totally honest still have that interesting kind of supreme armor in here. I'm pretty sure this is just like that Gen Pro material and not really an exposed foam. It might be an exposed foam, but it's kind of in the bind there. So it feels like it's basically just what this is in there with a like a embossing, or I guess that's the opposite of that right in there. Whereas this one definitely felt like that foam, like that exposed foam that was on the calf. They kind of moved away with that a bit on this line, the mock line. So kind of a different thing there. And then on the back end, just one piece instead of a segmented piece right here. And this whole backhand and strapping really did change. So we'll talk about that one, one second. Finally, the T, and honestly, this is a huge, huge change. So the T itself looks really similar until you get to like the teeth. And even here, they kind of look slightly similar. Obviously the, the mock has a higher T part up here, right? So to notice that you look at the side and you can see the big difference. You can see how that takes a sharp downward angle to the tip, where this one is a lot more smooth and a lot more flat. Now, what that does is greatly affects closure, or at least it really feels like it's a part of the thing that's affecting closure. So when you open this up all the way, you can see it opens up pretty good and that stays out there like that. But when you close it, you can kind of just feel like that part closing slightly better and not really fighting against the movement of the actual T itself. You can see how the pieces come off to the side and it really does remind me of a Passau glove. Like this piece really, really reminds me of a Passau glove, but instead of that really awkward, open, terrible closure on a Passau glove, you get perfect, perfect T seal right there. And as a comparison where this one is flat and you close it, it closes like, you can still kind of see that happening a little bit, but it just doesn't do anywhere what this one does. So while I'm not 100% sure this is all closureness, this definitely is like adjusting the pocket a lot. And you can definitely see how much taller that pocket is right here because of that compared to that much more flattened out design right there. So it is a skate lace pocket, as you can see, and it almost is a floating tee as you can also see, which is very interesting because people know there's a ton of mods like these on all the forums and all the Facebook groups and all the mods are like doing floating tees. So you can see how this is basically acting as a floating tee there. Whereas the old one sort of did it, but not really, as you can see how much more laced in that was. And so the new one is considerably, well, I'm gonna say an upgrade or it's a different preference 
to what that one was. So to open these gloves, obviously this one opens like that and you have this backhand right here, which is a very traditional design all the way through. I had sure grip put in there, um, but you had that Nash piece right here and then this big piece right here in your fingers and attachment here. Remember this because when we open this up, you're gonna see something very, very different. So you can see one, you have this massively like floating cuff piece. It's all kind of one piece. And this is more sewn like downward. So it doesn't move nearly as much as what this one would. It's also lighter. And this is basically the only little strap here. It has like the R, I think it's an ROM. Looks like a ROM. Anyways, that is like the one strap for your backhand. You do have this one down here too, just like the other one and you have finger stalls, kind of similar, but the big difference here and what is absolutely crazy about this glove and it's gonna be impossible for me to show off because you kind of have to feel it to see what it is. But inside here, you can see there's this little tiny line, right? It's like a clear line right there. I think that's a piece of silicone. I can't totally tell. I'm trying to get this to focus in there. It's very hard but there is like that little piece of stuff right there. It's like a silicone, it grips better. So it grips in your hand. It honestly feels like you're holding onto a piece of foam. It's ridiculous. So you put your fingers in there and it's basically running. I'm trying to count these lines with my fingers. It's basically running like right here all along your fingers. So it's gripping your entire hand from like past here all the way through with these lines to help your fingers from sliding out. It's really gripping in place. Now, when I wore this, I originally thought this was like an exposed foam or something like their catch light foam, which is like the stuff in here or something that was exposed on the other side, helping grip. But I think it's just a silicone or whatever this printing is on there that makes it grippy. It feels fantastic. Now, the other crazy thing about this, again, this is basically impossible for me to show because you have to feel it, but you can see how soft that is when I'm pushing into this. And it's kind of here too, but it's considerably more so on like the fingers. And you can notice it most on your fingers. It is a bit here and it's super soft and super plush, but on the fingers is the crazy and super noticeable part. Basically, every time you close this, the glove feels like it's closing around your fingers and you can feel your fingers going into the foam. It feels like a smartphone in there. It honestly feels like your fingers are like digging into this and like holding this and it's grippy kind of like this too. So it's almost like your hand would be on this and this is pour on and this is a great, great material. And it feels like that all the way through there and everywhere you squeeze. So every time you squeeze, your hand kind of compresses the foams and it kind of wraps around your hand. It is so comfortable. It is unbelievable how this glove feels and how different it feels compared to like the other glove and compared to everything else. That's not on this. This is just a traditional catching glove. I think it's a really good catching glove, but this is totally on a whole different level of anything I've ever worn. Ridiculous. It closes so good too, but we'll get to that in a second. I see a lot of people seeing game changing a lot, and I don't really agree with that because I don't think this will make everybody go to this way and change how gloves are. I just think this is kind of, it's definitely an evolution because it's definitely moving in a different direction and pushing that like next step of gloves. I think Bauer is going to keep going that way, but I can't see everyone kind of going that way. But this glove feels amazing and you have to try this on and just see how that feels in your hands. And I don't even mean the closure, it feels amazing, which it does. Just the feel of the glove in your hand feels unreal. I also really do enjoy the like designs on here and everything and how that works. It kind of looks like, this kind of looks like all circuitry boards while the actual design itself looks like an aircraft. And Cause on the inside of the aircraft, there's a ton of circuit boards, right? So that's kind of cool like that. I do wish this piece kind of could open up more, but it's kind of nitpicking, like just so it airs out better. Cause that glove I find doesn't air out the best, but that's again, a nitpick and not a huge deal. So on the inside of this glove, there is also two straps. You can see there's one here, one here. So you could put this on either way if you wanted to. The stock one is on this spot right here. So that honestly felt really comfortable and really nice. But if you wanted to, you can go this route as well. If I can actually get this in there and do it that way. So it does hold on a different angle as it compared to there. And it feels fine, it like locks it the way you want. So you just have to decide which one you would prefer. So while I'll reiterate over and over that I don't like to talk about the actual weights of the gloves because I think people care too much about those numbers when it's not something that's quite as important as people think. This glove is frankly the lightest glove that I have and 
is the lightest glove that I've used. It's even lighter than the Warrior G5, which is pretty impressive because those are generally the lightest things ever. And this is extremely, extremely light. Lighter than what this glove is, this one is considerably lighter and it's honestly extremely impressive. Now this isn't a Pro Palm and most of my gloves are Pro Palm, so that would add a little bit of weight there, but this thing just on your hand and everything feels ridiculously light. Like it needs to be called out because it is a big difference on gloves that I've used. The closure on this glove is simply put, the best I've ever seen on a retail glove or it's like so close compared to all the other ones that are really really good that it's just unbelievable like this is not worked in and this is kind of how it came out of the box basically and it's more broken in than any glove I've ever seen it's also again not a pro palm where a lot of my gloves are pro palms but this thing closes just so ridiculously and so well and the other thing too is it almost feels like it could be a double break glove and some companies have done this in the past people said at least companies have done it in the past and it's obviously not the case but it closes so well that you can close it like fingertip to thumb like this and it, you can see it's not closing the right way it's not perfect or you can close it how it's supposed to be which is like middle finger right here and it closes better and it that's the natural way but because the glove closes so well you can almost do it kind of any way that you want and it's just very 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 impressive for what this is now this is obviously uh my pro palm and this has been used but the problem with this glove is it's not really broken in until you kind of keep it closed overnight but even then like mine closes is okay but it's a lot more challenging to close and it's harder to close than what this is this thing is just on a whole different level obviously this is a game ready but it closes just ridiculously, ridiculously well. And it's very, very impressive. The Hyperlite was really good in terms of closure from what Bauer has done. And this is kind of on the same level, if not a little bit better, but it's just a different break angle. So now they're kind of on par with each other in terms of closure. Whereas before the ultrasonic just didn't close nearly as nice as the Hyperlite did. For protection, this is a thing where, again, I keep using pro palms in my gloves and I play against guys who can shoot pretty well. I also have the puck machine where I do tests on, right? So I use pro palms in my gloves. This is their game ready. It's just their stock and it did pretty well. I still felt shots in it, especially on the puck machine at the higher speeds, but it wasn't terrible. It did considerably better than the true game ready that I used in the past. This crush that in terms of protection again still feel pump shots you still feel stuff here and everything but it's considerably better than what like i've used for gloves in the past like ccm game ready gloves this is way better than what those were and this clothes is way better it's almost on par with this one i'd say it's just a slight downgrade than what this is but again pro palm compared to a game ready so that is very impressive that this is kind of on that level they did a very good job with this and like it it works and i'm not i wouldn't be afraid to use this in my games and stuff i wouldn't be hesitant using it and i wouldn't be hesitant putting it in front of the puck machine again or some gloves that i've used and tested i have been a bit worried about and this one was just solid all around and i like it i'm really impressed with how they managed to make this close so greatly as you can see without like bulking it up it honestly feels pretty close to Brian's pro palms in terms of how like they feel like they, there's nothing in there to make it a pro palm and it still closes really well. This is just a game ready and it closes that well, but the protection isn't bad. It's pretty good. So it's very impressed there. Personally, I would still order a pro palm just because that's what I do on all my gloves. Catching with this glove. So I did the 100 puck challenge and I also used it in games. So we'll have a separate video where I talk about and I'll kind of like slow-mo 100 puck challenge shots and really dive into that for this. This one, good, but a total departure from what this is. And that might be confusing to some, but let me put it this way. Bauer is still selling this as an option, and I can see this glove sticking around for a while, or the idea of this glove sticking around for a while, especially in the pros, where this one, it might be better for people who want a different thing. And honestly, it's kind of like my thing with warrior gloves, where warrior gloves catch really well, the lower the speed are. The faster the speed, I find them don't catch as well. And that's almost 
kind of similar to this. And what I mean by that is this is a really good catching glove. If you're really quick with your hands and you're reaching everything out and catching everything and the goal is to squeeze everything to keep it closed, this glove is excellent for that and better than what this one is. The thing that this glove doesn't do better is kind of just directing pucks into it and kind of catching pucks when you don't necessarily know you're gonna catch a puck or when you don't squeeze. Now this glove did an excellent job and I've watched the 100 puck challenge where I talk about it where basically anything here as well as here just goes right into the pocket and it just eats it up. And you can see kind of like how sloped this all feels. And the good thing about this I found, especially in using it, is say if you're in a blocking position and your pad's right here and you just go like this through a screen, if it hits in here, it generally stays in the pocket and you catch it. Obviously anything here is gonna bounce out because it's just a flat cuff, but anything kind of here and here would go into that pocket and stay in that pocket. With this, I found it not to be quite the same. Now, I feel like the hand and the palm is a little bit flatter. To me, it just looks like it's not as scooped as what is on this one, and it doesn't really direct quite as well into the pocket as what this glove does. So for this one, anything like I squeeze, I caught all really well. I didn't catch as well when I didn't squeeze and just tried to like grab it. I also noticed that anything down here, I didn't catch nearly as well as what was on there. Some would turn, but that's more of like just how you get the puck if you don't get it right at the right spot and it can kind of turn. But I definitely noticed that like things down here would kind of hit here, hit here and bounce out versus kind of just sliding in. And the part I noticed this the most in is when I use it on ice though, not even the puck machine. Cause when I would go for a blocking save like this and blocking anything that comes through just cause it's in tight and you don't know exactly where it's going i had a ton of pucks that would hit this and just bounce out whereas other gloves i've been using especially like this one's really good for that would normally just direct into the pocket or keep it in this one would kind of hit and bounce out so unless you squeeze that in it didn't do quite as good of a job as what this one did in terms of catching in that sense now if you're someone who has a crazy active hand and i'm gonna be totally honest i don't i'm not super fast with my hands i'm more of a blocking goalie not a reactive goalie if you're someone that always snags out gloves like crazy, windmilling like crazy, arms are going crazy, this will probably work better for you than what that one will because it catches, like actually catches better. And it feels like a glove that is more designed to force you to make a save and catch it rather than try to block a save and it ends up going into the pocket. The one thing I do want to say about catching though, and you notice this in the puck machine a lot, is like the T, stuff that hits the T does a good job of staying in there and it doesn't like fold over. So Bauer does a pretty good job of when you straighten it out like this, you can see that this is still open, right? So this part is in front and not behind the T like this. So some companies, when you open the T all the way, basically this edge ends up being on the inside and so you get pucks hitting here more often than you would kind of hitting here and staying in. Bauer has done a really good job. So when it is all that open, pucks are still gonna hit here and go into the tee. So that's a good thing. You also saw in like the NHL with Campbell where a puck hit like his tee, folded it in and a puck went in. It's harder to do on this glove than it is on his glove. And that's the tee design here is one of those reasons. I have a reinforced tee to kind of stop that. And mine is stiffer than what this one is. And this one's, as you can see, softer than what mine is. I would always go reinforce C just to kind of have that feature in there and to hope the T will hold up longer over time. But Bauer does an excellent job of kind of going in there and it helps with catching in that regards. Things on here directed into the pocket pretty well. So again, I did mention it was a bit more scooped than what this one is. And this one was really good at directing all pucks basically hitting here into the pocket. This kind of did the same thing. So it was good in that sense. It was just kind of down here and here where I noticed it wasn't quite as good as what was on the ultrasonic. But again, Bauer did a great thing here where they still offer the ultrasonic. So just like kind of what they're doing with the two-piece Hyperlite blocker where they're still offering that really popular model. A lot of goalies in the NHL are still using the 2S Pro, which is pretty similar to this, to be honest. Some are using the NXG like Vitek Vanacek, but this glove I can see being still really popular. So people like that 2S Pro and they can kind of move into the ultrasonic fine. I can't see a, like them all going directly to the mock just because it is a very different feeling glove between the two in terms of just like how pucks are caught themselves. The break angle and everything is the, pretty similar. It's honestly the same. It's gonna be that CCM 600, like the 75 degree angle break that people know. It's really similar. It's just the way that this like is sloped, I feel, and the way that the 
pocket and palm are kind of designed and everything here. It's slightly different enough that I feel like this one works in a better or different way, I should say, a different way than what this one does. But again, if you're a big catching goalie with crazy fast hands and don't block a lot and expect to catch everything yourself, this is an excellent glove for that and it will probably be up your alley. For me as a blocking goalie and someone that just blocks and hopes sometimes that pucks go in there for my screen and stuff, this one has worked really well for me and is I, I'm a huge fan of it. Personally, if I was getting a custom Moxa, I'd probably still go back to that ultrasonic glove just because it is so good for me in terms of my style and how I play that when using this one, I wasn't as happy as it, I was. But again, personal preference thing doesn't mean this is a bad glove. It is a very, very good glove. It's just a different style of catching. Finally, the test for pick puck retention, basically, when you're trying to cover a puck is totally fine doesn't come out at all and like even when you're on your heel it's is really good like this glove is super soft so even when you're on your heel it opens and flattens out really good and picking up pucks is so easy and this t this whole glove is so easy to use and everything and while i mentioned this kind of reminds me of the pass out t this t isn't like super flexible and terrible like the pass out t it still has some flex in it but it doesn't like when you actually use a puck it doesn't just blow it open and make it worse so this one is a way better closure and everything overall so overall like everything in the mock line this glove is very very impressive i love what bauer is doing making these small changes and kind of pushing the boundaries on stuff but this glove closes so well the protection is really solid for a game ready for like a stock one it's impressive and it's it's closure is just so unreal and i love what they're doing the silk on the tips i love the material that's being used that feels so comfortable in your hands and is pretty padded for a game ready this is an excellent glove, especially at the retail level. I think a lot of people are going to like the Bauer Mock glove, especially compared to the 2S Pro and the Ultrasonic. The ease of closure and how this glove will play will probably benefit a lot more people than what that one will. So I have a feeling this is going to be a huge success, especially with this break angle where honestly CCM has faltered making a glove off the shelf actually feel really good. You have to mod it and squish foams and stuff. This should honestly just take over anyone who's looking for that 600 break glove. They should basically go into this and try this and they're probably going to really, really enjoy it. It's very impressive. Bauer is doing a ton of awesome things. Just like this, you look at those true goalies in the NHL with like the 580s and everything and all their tees kind of look like this. And Bauer just listened to you and did the kind of adjustments that people do anyways. And it's very impressive and it's an awesome, awesome glove. Definitely recommend people try it out. I definitely think Bauer has a huge winner in that department right here. So huge thanks for Front Row Sports for allowing me to borrow this gear and do videos on. The links to them are in the description. They have stores in Canada and the US. For buying hockey stuff and you wanna support the channel, check out them, make a purchase, let them know you came from me, it'd be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, if you wanna see me do more reviews and do more videos and test gear, please reach out to the companies on social media. Like I'd love to test out the new Axis stuff. Reach out to CCM Goalie, CCM Hockey on Twitter, Instagram, all that. Let them know you wanna see me, hockey reviews, do a review and test their gear, it'd be greatly appreciated. I have a ton of content of the mock stuff, so make sure you check all out. Links will be in the description when they're live and obviously just subscribe to me on YouTube so you can see it. Remember to like this video, comment below. Let me know if you tried this. Let me know if you have any questions of it. I'll try to answer it the best I can. Let me know what the next glove you wanna see me review is. And finally, remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and TikTok, links are in the description. If you wanna support the channel so I can make more content and doing real reviews like this and doing reviews with the puck machine, check out the links in the description to Patreon, buy me a coffee. Everything through there always comes back into the channel so I keep doing reviews and actual tests. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.